What's good YouTube? Welcome to episode 6 of Survival Tutorial. Today's episode is going to be a short one. We're just building up a welding ship and getting some stuff welded together. The next episode we'll work on a vertical miner as well and maybe go a little bit further than that. So now we're running into a problem where there's so much to weld together it's going to be a pain to do it by hand. So I think it's time to actually start on a welding ship. So we're going to come over here and I'm going to show you guys how to make one really quickly. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put down a rotor. We're not going to do this the same way we did the last one. We're going to set this up for a permanent situation and allow ourselves later to use projectors to print ships if we want to. So we're going to go ahead and set it up for that now. So just place down the rotor to start with and then you see this little top part right here, the rotor part. Just grind that on off. We're not going to need it. But what we will need is we will need to weld up the rotor here before we do anything else okay so now that that's done we're going to run over to a control panel it doesn't matter where we're at just any control panel and we're going to find the rotor here what we're going to do is we're going to attach a small head to this rotor that way it converts it over to a small grid at the end of the small head that's how you merge a small and large grid together that's the easiest way anyway so now we've got a small head on the rotor as you see Let's go ahead and get this queued up real fast so we don't lose it. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to place some light armor blocks on top of it. We don't necessarily need to do anything with these light armor blocks other than just leave them here and leave enough room for a ship to attach because that's basically the what we're going to use to build the ships on. So we're just going to chop them right off of there. And the next thing you want to do is add a projector. So the projector has a specific way that you need to place it here. If you notice on top of the hologram here, you've got a little cross pattern. That means that's the very top of the projector. And the front of the projector is actually going to have two little vertical lines. Or yeah, right here. The, the vertical line that goes across the projector there. That shows you that's the front of the projector. So we're just going to place that facing out from here and go ahead and get this all ready to go. Now that that's done, we're gonna need an actual control seat as well. Now we need the actual control seat, not just a regular seat because this isn't a remote control thing. So let's find a seat here and we're gonna use the flight seat for this. So I wanna place the flight seat somewhere where we can see it pretty well and it's not too close to it. So we're gonna go about right here, go ahead and cue this up and do what we can. Okay, now that we've got the seat placed, we're going to hop in the seat real quick and we're going to hit the G key. I'm not really sure what it is on the Xbox controller. Speaking of which, if you are having trouble with the Xbox controller, then look down in the description and there will be a link to a video by Zokli. He's one of the devs for Keen Software and he has a really good in-depth controller video up that basically tells you what all the controls on the controllers or all the controls on the Xbox are. So if you're struggling with that, I know a couple people are, then go ahead and watch that video. He basically runs through everything. And there are a lot of controls by the way. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to take this projector and put it down on the toolbar. You notice we've got the increase and decrease for horizontal, vertical, and forward offset and we've also got increase and decrease for pitch yaw and roll we want to put all of these on our bar so we can control where our holograms are going to go so we're going to go ahead and start with the increase and decrease on horizontal and we're going to just put them on the bar across just like that in order so they're easier to remember and we're going to go all the way to forward offset and then move over to I'm going to hit control 2 on the PC. I'm not sure, like I said, what it is on the Xbox controller. Speaking of which, I need to watch that video that I was just telling you about. But we're going to go ahead and do pitch, yaw, and roll on another bar over here. The reason I want to do this on another bar is just so I don't get lost where I'm at. It, it makes more sense to me to put them on separate bars. And this is the way I always set my projectors up. It just makes things easier. So now that that's set up, let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how to do a projector with the blueprint. I don't know if anybody has blueprints yet, but if you do, this is how you do it. So I'm just going to choose the camera rig here. I'm going to load the, that blueprint in because I'm going to need that for this 
the series anyway. So I'm just going to copy that to clipboard and now it's into the projector already. And you notice how, let me hop out here and show you real quick. You notice how this is off center and turned around the wrong way. That's got to do with the way that the first block was placed. There is a way to deal with that, but we'll get into that when we get into blueprinting ships and stuff for future. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin this around and put it in the correct place to where it would be easy to build from there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to spin it around one by increasing, I believe that was the pit. Yeah, increasing the pitch. And then I'm going to hit control one again and move this forward. So that should be four. No, four is the wrong one. Five. And I want to move this forward until it's just barely touching or almost touching because I do have something on the back end there. So I'm going to hop out now and show you how this works. So when we built onto here and ended up touching the hologram, you notice how the block touching the hologram or the block on the hologram will actually show up differently. That means we can actually weld this piece in if we want to. We're not going to do all of this now, but that's basically how you do it. You'll just weld each individual piece for the blueprint from there. You can use a base welder as well. That'll work just fine. But that's how you do a blueprint and we're going to get into that later, but I just wanted to show you real quick how, how it works just in case you have something that you want to print out. And we're going to hop in here and we're just going to cut this projector off. I'm going to tell it to keep the projection for later because I'm going to be doing this after the episode just so I can get the ship up for cinematic purposes. And we are going to go ahead and toggle the block off because we're not going to be using that right now. I just wanted to get the platform ready for it. That way, whenever we're ready for it, we can do it. So we're going to go ahead and build our first ship here. So I'm just going to move this out a little bit and we're going to need a battery. So let's go ahead and grab batteries. I'm going to put the battery on the bottom here and we're going to need a large cargo container as well. That's going to go directly on top of the battery. And I need to pay attention to which direction these things are facing too. I need one in the back and one in the front and I might as well just sit it like that just to make it look better. And up front we're going to put a welder. What good is a welding ship without a welder, right? So let's go ahead and put the welder in here. And then on the back end I'm going to go ahead and put a connector because we need something to connect to the ship or the ship to the base with. So that goes on the back end here and we just want to line it up right in the center. Like I said, be very careful of where you put the large and small connectors because you're going to end up needing them specifically in these areas. So we're going to also add thrusters here. Grab the large atmospheric thruster. We probably want two batteries. So let me go ahead and add another battery before we do anything else here. There we go, and that would be a good spot for our gyro under there. So we'll leave that spot open for the gyro. And we're going to start adding thrusters, and we also want to add a cockpit here. So I'm going to go for the regular standard cockpit and just spin it around to where it needs to be. So I'm just going to sit it right on top of the box there. It doesn't really matter where it's at. And we're going to grab our gyro. You need a gyroscope on any atmospheric ship that you do. Okay, so we're going to place that there and we're going to start working on some thrusters here. So let's grab up our thrusters. We want two facing down. That way, if we fill this box up, then it's not going to be too heavy for the thrusters that we have. And then we're going to do small thrusters for the rest. We're going to use these spots right here for the reverse thrusters. And we're gonna use this spot right here for the forward thruster. When I say forward and reverse thruster, I mean that's the direction that they are putting their thrust in, by the way. I don't think everyone says it like that, but that's just the way that I look at it. And we're gonna put these side by side right here. There we go, and that should work out pretty nicely. I'm just making sure that we've got thrust in every direction. You don't really need thrust in the up direction unless you're going to be using a remote control. Gravity will take care of the rest for you. So I think this is about it. Let me make sure. Yes, this will be a functioning ship. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna weld all of this up for you and I will be right back. Okay, so I just wanted to go on and let you know here. You hear this little noise in the background, right? 
that comes from the large atmospheric thruster fighting this rotor here so if you get that sound all you have to do to cut that off or to stop that and keep it from happening is hop into your cockpit and cut off your inertial dampeners which is Z on the PC and then hop back out and it'll stop you don't want them fighting against each other because I have seen it cause issues on another playthrough so just a little word to the wise there and we are finishing this up now so I might as well go ahead and do this and now that this is done I'm gonna have to go ahead and give it a spot to park at the base just be aware that if you do the inertial dampener thing, you're going to have to cut them back on before you fly the ship because as soon as you undock, you're going to fall to the ground if you don't. And that could be dangerous. So we're going to go ahead and grab a conveyor here. And we're going to need a curved conveyor tube as well because we want to connect to the back of it. So we're just going to hang that right off of this assembler here. And put a connector on the end I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade my tools while I'm at it uh, we got some silver in I believe it was the last episode so I decided I'd go ahead and do the tools in order to do the elite hand drill and stuff like that you're gonna need platinum so that's gonna be you have to get the space for that for the elite hand drills and the elite automatic rifles I'm also going to make a couple extra hydrogen bottles here. That way we can have extras because it never hurts to have extras. Especially now that we've got us a welding ship going. Because we don't need the extra inventory space anymore. As of getting that going. So let's go ahead and dock this thing up and get everything queued up. So I'll show you how to use the welding ship. See, this is why we want to make sure <laughs> that you turn on the inertial dampeners, just like I was saying before. I got lucky and didn't have it too high up in the air, but kind of good thing that I made that mistake so you could see what would happen. And I apparently forgot two thrusters as well, so let me go ahead and take care of that real quick. Oh no, I didn't forget a thruster, I just busted one. That's what it was. I thought I had all of them. I broke one in the fall, so this one right here needs to be fixed. Alright, so everything should be good now. Let's go ahead and park this thing. Okay, now that I have this parked, I'm going to let the batteries charge up for a little bit. And while I'm letting the batteries charge up, I'm probably going to have to make an actual iron run and get stuff queued up for all of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and queue up. Make sure build planner is empty. I'm going to queue up the assembler here and this assembler and these two refineries here. And we're going to get these running as soon as we can. And I think I'm going to need to do these conveyor junctions as well. Okay, capacity's reached. And we're going to go ahead and just queue these up by shift middle clicking. Okay, now that production's done, if you want to copy everything over into the ship that we just made all you have to do is get in the cockpit of the ship then hit this little button right here that says show only inventories of the current ship after going to the show connected inventories this is the one that it starts on as the character inventory so if you click this button right here it'll show you all the stuff here make sure this is selected here with the show inventories on the current of the current ship and then you can click this button right here the withdraw components for build planner and it will actually try its best to load your ship up. Sometimes you have to hit it a few times and it might be full. It's pretty full right now, so that should be good. Then we've got a lot of the components in here already. So we're going to go ahead and let me put the connector on my bar here. I need to find the right connector. Okay, so I'm going to put the connector on number 9 and switch lock. And we're also going to do the thing with that we did before with the drill. But we're going to do it with the welder instead. So we're going to use number 1. Actually, number 2 should be the welder because that's the way we got it set up on the other one. And then we're going to find the welder here and we're going to toggle block on and off. That way we've got both controls. I generally, when I'm using a welder, will just use the on-off. 
it makes things a little bit easier. So we're going to go ahead and undock here. Move forward just a little bit to get out of lock. And then all you have to do if you want to weld something is go turn your welders on. Then find the object that you want to weld and just touch the welder to it. There you go. Enjoy welding up your base. While you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell notification if you want to be alerted when the next videos are coming out. In the next episode, we are going to work on the vertical miner. Until then, try one of the two videos on your screen now. Thank you. Have a nice day.